Hey everyone, I forget I'd give you a um, quick showing of what I'm doing. This is a quilt, it's a Lone Star quilt that I taught a few years ago that I am actually quilting for a friend of mine. I've done a lot of background um, quilting with a lot of details and it's, it's heavily quilted. So what I decided, um, the actual star part, which are all these little diamonds, is that I would do limited quilting, which is just using the ruler work to go around the diamonds. Um, and I figured I'd show you what I'm doing. It's fun. So all I've done right now, um, I'm actually doing it in threads that will um, disappear, match the background, because I just don't want them to be um, extremely noticeable. So I have brought my bobbin thread up. I'm just going to give a couple of quick stitches just so that it kind of locks it in place. And I'm using my one of my rulers. Yes, I could probably do this without the ruler, but personally, I feel really comfortable, much more comfortable with the ruler than I do free motion. So I'm just going to use my ruler. Use the space engage. Um, Let's try it this way. I have no idea. I'm just kind of winging it as far as the route. And I use my space and gauge to make sure that I hit where I want to because the foot is a quarter of an inch from the needle to the edge of the foot. And I want to hit each of the points. And for those of you who are wondering, this is a cute little pop socket. It's a mini pop socket that I found, believe it or not, in um, CVS. Came as a pack of three. And I can adjust the pop socket any place that I need to. But on some of my bigger rulers, sometimes I just want that little extra help. I do have non-stick uh, tape on the back of my ruler, but... Sometimes it just makes it a little bit help, extra help, a little bit of extra grip. I'm using my quarter inch spacing gauge to make sure I get it exactly right. So no, I'm not doing anything super fancy now, but just wanted to show you what I'm working on. I'm having fun, actually. I love ruler work. I really do. And I figured I'd show you a little bit. If I could do ruler work probably every day, all day, I probably would. The only thing I probably would give out would be my feet and my legs. So when I go down here, I'll probably change thread colors, not probably, but I will change thread colors so that it will hide any boo-boos or gaps or anything like that. I'm gonna go up to here just because of where my camera is. And if I get into a pickle or a spot that is a little bit harder to get back from, I'll just backtrack. After a while, it'll get pretty good at and um, spacing and figuring out your spacing. So for instance, like here, I'm definitely gonna run into a problem. So I have two options. I can go stitch in the seam or 
spectra. Which is another reason why I'm probably, like I said, going to be using the same color thread throughout. So that it, if I do any boo boos, can't really see them. I really am having Yeah, I have my roller base on. So what does that mean? It means I can't go down as far as I would like. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is stitch in the ditch and get back. Someplace where I can is stitch. There. Oh, definitely I have to unstitch that part. I like oh, you know why? It's the wrong side, that's why. After. Unstitch anything. Get into a pretty good groove. And the more you work with rulers, the easier it gets. But I will warn you, even I make mistakes. So, once in a while, you have to rip out. But I'm okay with that. All right, back to my starting point. There you go. Other than my little boo-boo, but that's okay. I will unstitch that little part that I messed up because I came back and did another curve. I hope you like it, and I hope you enjoy it. And I will show you more as I keep on going on this quilt. Have a great weekend, everybody. See if we can show you before I go. Hopefully you like it. I hope she likes it, but here it is before I go. Some more of that I've done. All right, everybody, have a great weekend.